Hey everybody, what's going on? Marty here with Comic Book Fanatics, and I want to do a really quick video here and talk a little bit about what I think and my theories of a entity in Star Wars Rebels, well, the Star Wars universe as a whole, as introduced as the Bendu. Okay, now we're first introduced to the Bendu when, in first of all, in season three of episode one of Rebels. Uh, now, when Kanan is drawn to a location outside of the protection, protective confines of the Rebel base. Now, at the time, Kanan was really, really struggling internally with the Sith holocron that, um, that his Padawan had secured from Darth Maul. Okay? And he's so he's going through a lot of turmoil right now. And we first hear that the Bendu reaching out to Kanan and say, "Come to me, I can help you." And so that right there is how Kanan eventually ends up to meet the Bendu. Now, the Bendu upon their meeting of. Uh, Kanan and the Bendu's meeting, they, they start talking about uh, the Sith and the Jedi Order and uh, the Force. And the Bendu mentions and calls the light and dark side of the Force Ashla and Bogan. Now, we know that the Bendu had also mentioned that he that he is a neutral creature and which is a balance between the light and dark. This is what the early now. This is what the early Force users used to distinguish two sides of the Force: Ashla and Bogan. Okay, before the before there was an establishment of the Sith and Jedi Order. This tells me of the now. This tells me of the connection of the Bendu and the ancient Jedi Order. Okay, Bendu is more than a Force sensitive being, but rather a Force yielding entity. And he comes, from, uh, which comes from the outer region of the galaxies. Now, in episode, th uh, in season three, episode one, the Bendu lives on a remote planet called Analon, uh, where the rebels has has made their new uh, rebel base at. Now, to understand the Force as we know it now, we have to understand some history and the origins of the dark and light side. Now, over thirty-six thousand BBY or if you don't know what BBY is, some, it's very similar to what we use as AD and DC, but BBY being um, the before the Battle of Yavin. And the Battle of Yavin is what we see in Star Wars Episode 4, uh, when Luke battles the uh, and destroys the Death Star and what have you, okay? Now, over 36,000 BBY, pyramids-like ships would, would stop at a different planet. They'd go around, they'd stop at different planets, and they would call out to these Force-sensitive sensitive beings, um, and then they would just convince them to come on board, right? Now, they would travel all across the universe and then finally end up at the core of the universe. Now, eight of these ships, they, they, made, they, made, they ultimately made their way to the planet of Tython. And they, they met up with the ninth and much larger ship, which was waiting on them. Now, as, the, as all these passengers, these four sensitive passengers, disembarked from the ship, they had realized that Tython was absolutely strong in the Force. Much, much stronger than anyone had ever, ever experienced all throughout the galaxies that, where they came from. Now, these travelers from all over the galaxy understood they were brought to Typhon to study about the Force and the abilities they could be, they could be, that could be provided through it. These travelers, now they, they eventually made their home on Typhon and formed the ancient Jedi Order, okay? They realized and they understood that the balance of the Force as, they, they, well, they learned that the planets uh, natural disasters that, that was on that planet of Typhon would react to certain ba uh, uh, balances of the Force. Now, since they understood that balance and what required within this philosophy, 
they saw this as a necessary balance between a whole, a whole which of the force, not just one or two sides, dark and light, um, but as a whole. Okay, much like okay, this is much like what we we understand as how can I put it the yin and yang of the Chinese philosophy. You know, you kind of need both a balance. Okay, which is that whole yin and yang. And to understand this duality, it was it was physically represented in the two moons that orbited Typhon. Okay, now there are two moons that orbited Typhon, and they called this Ashland Bogan. All right, and one of the one of the planets was was bright, calling it Asha. The other one was more of a darker sort of, um, I guess, not necessarily red, but that that would that's what they would call Bogan. Okay. Now, even tens and thousands of years after the establishment of the Jedi Order, Jedi Order. The moons would still consider would be considered a conception in the order's light and, and the dark side of the force and the necessity of the balance of the force. Okay, so it has a lot. It has a lot to do with both sides of the force. Those moons, but once again, because there were some, they understood the philosophy and the separation of those two moons. They still understand. They still understood it as a whole. The force as a whole. Okay. Now, in Star Wars Legend, the, the Bendu were a Force-sensitive being that studied both sides of the Force, and they took their name from the beliefs and religion term Bendu. So, Bendus did not. Now, they did. They did want to be involved in conflict. They were just absolutely neutral. They took a neutral stance uh, to understand where, and, and they were aware of the uh, different. Forces throughout the galaxy. Now, since Bendu referred to the light and the dark side as Ashland Bogan, it sensed the internal conflict that Kanan had. It tells me that the Bendu has a strong connection and understanding of the philosophical teachings of the Jedi Order. Jedi Order, I'm sorry. Not Jedi, but Jedi Order. Now, before the establishment of the Jedi and Sith Order, even even before the Great Schism, the introduction of the Bendu Order and the, and the introduction of the Wills, it tells us that the Star Wars universe is more than just Jedi and Sith, and that's what I think is so exciting now. You know, whereas in the past, we, always, we just knew the Jedi and the Sith, the light and the dark side. But now that the Bendu was introduced as a force-wielding character from is way back as the Jedi Order or the understanding of the Jedi Order because of the, the terminology of um, Ashla and Bogan, light and dark. And, um, both of these introductions tell us that there's more to understand of the Force than just the light and dark side. Now, I believe there are some similarities between the Bendu and, Snoo and Snoke uh, in Episode 7. The Bendu and the father, the sister, and the brother that we see in season six of the Clone Wars when Anakin Skywalker and, and Obi Wan Kenobi goes to that Force sensitive planet and meets with the, uh, I guess you want to call it more of a, a physical manifestation of the Force, where the father being a, a neutral and then the son, he was more a manifestation of the dark side, and the daughter was more a manifestation of the light side. Okay, so now we we also introduce it to those characters and a much darker, uh, not darker, but a more broader side of the force now. And then we we hear about sensitive force sensitive beings in Rogue One with. Uh, uh, Jirut Inui being a force sensitive being and now we hear about the, the Bendu okay and now why do I think there's a similar similarities between maybe Bendu and Snoop because um, that there are both they're both ancient creatures and they have mentioned that they've been around to see many many things okay and 
as 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 we hear in the Force Awakens when Snoke is talking, um, and he had mentioned that you know he's been around for a very very long time and he, and he's um, seen many things and he's experienced many things, and not to mention uh, they. They don't necessarily they they don't necessarily fall under Sith or Jedi order. Now the ben, the Bendu reached out to Kanan because he felt turmoil and struggles within. I think the same may have happened to Ahsoka after her departure from, from the Jedi order. If you don't remember, she was she was accused, and then she was put on trial, and then they asked her to come back because she was all the, all the. Uh, accusations were false however you know she had felt some really big turmoil within her because just no one believed her no one trusted her the Jedi order didn't trust her right and so she she ended up leaving the Jedi the Jedi order now also one one thing I don't know if you guys paid attention to we see in one of the episodes of Rebel well, actually episode one I believe it was when Kanan was speaking to Bendu an owl-like creature, uh, which is called a convoy, appeared and even landed on Bendu's shoulder. Now, same similarity, we see that this we see this owl many other times. Maybe not the same owl, maybe a different owl, and accompanying Ahsoka on different occasions. Right? And it's possible this is this is a state that represents Ahsoka's state of being neutral. Is that possible? We see the owl with Bendu, and we see the owl with Ahsoka. So maybe it's a state of, 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 you know, a manifestation of a neutral person, a neutral force wielder. Now it's possible that uh, that's, that same may have happened to Ahsoka and took on the belief of the middle path as the Bendu teaches, right? Because we've seen Ahsoka on Rebels now, and it's nothing has been mentioned right now of, of her neutrality or how she fits into either side of the force right but we, we know we know we based off her her white lightsabers that she wields now that it's it's neither green blue red and and if you know a little bit about the colors of that the jedi and the sith use there there are meanings behind the color of that I and mean, we can always save that for another time but now, what is this telling us about the Force? I believe it tells us, and it is also leading us to believe that there is such a larger concept of the Force that we originally know. Okay. Now, after Kanan loses his sight in the battle against Small, the Bendu begins to teach him how to see by using the Force. Where do you see that last time? Very similar to Chirrut Inui in Rogue One, right? In The Force Awakens. Um, also, Snoop was impressed with Ren because of his ability to use both the dark and light side of the Force. Now, I think there's some connection between Bendu, the father, and the dark brother, and the light sister that I had mentioned earlier. But I think, you know, I just think that now we see that similarity between Kanan to be able to see again utilizing the Force within him, much like what we see in Chinrit Inui. Guardian of the Temples of Wills in Rogue One. So now, now we're starting to have a more broader aspect of the Force. We're starting to see a little bit, of, and, and they're and they're throwing a little bit of history in there for us as well, um, which is kind of leading into the whole greater scheme of things. Of our, what are we going to know about the Force now, and where where is that going to lead? The Last Jedi. What is Luke Skywalker's part of being the last Jedi? Are, are we going to see maybe that is the last Jedi and there's going to be more Jedis after that? Are they going to reestablish the Jedi Order? Or is he the last Jedi, but now we're going to see a bigger part of the Force? We're going to see something much huger, something maybe within the, uh, the neutral realm. And there's going to be so much more um, abilities for force-wielding entities, force-wielding users, that now uh, the force is just more than just a dark and light side. It's more than that, and now we're leading to what the ancients used to call 
Ashland Bogan, two sides, but the force as a whole. If that makes any sense. Okay. So, that's what I'm excited about. To see if the Star Wars universe is going to broaden their story within canon. I'm excited to see if they're going to bring in some of that, that legend storyline because it's already been established, right? It's already there. And how, what kind of twists and, and um, turns they're going to use to kind of bring in that storyline. So, very interesting time. I'm very excited about this. I hope a little bit of the background that I gave you about the Bendus helped out a little bit and maybe kind of opened um, your eyes and maybe kind of, you know, had you do you know get the wheel spinning in your head to think about your own theories right because everybody has their own theories you know uh there's th theories about this and there's theories about who snoke is and there's theories about who um uh, ray is you know and so there's so much so much that we don't know about the star wars universe but I believe that they're starting to bring in a lot of legends. I, I believe they're starting to want us to see that, you know, the era, whereas, whereas the era of Bogan, uh, Ashlon and Bogan ended, and then we saw the era of the Sith and Jedi. So what if the era of Sith and Jedi are about to come to an end, and now we're going back to a bigger side of the Force? Maybe something more than the, than the Jedi Order of Ashla Bogan. Maybe something more than the uh, the Jedi Jedi Order, you know. And maybe something more bigger and huger that we have yet to see yet. So very exciting times. Uh, I think this video went on a little bit longer than I expected to, but I wanted to I wanted to share with you guys my thoughts and theories and opinions on on those. And tell me what you think. Uh, tell me what you guys think as far as what theories that, you know, Star Wars Universe, Star Wars Canon, and Star Wars Legend has a part in that. So, I, I like to hear your opinion, guys. And remember, there's no right, there's no wrong. It's just a matter of what your opinion is, guys. And I appreciate you guys listening for this. And I really appreciate you guys if you would either like or dislike it. And maybe write a comment right there and share the video, okay? Thanks a lot, guys. I'll talk to you soon.